Hello all, I am Sharon Sunil, doing my Masters in Biotechnology from St. Thomas College, Pillai. Today in this video, I will be explaining about viroids and prions. These are the synopsis. Introduction Viruses as efficient and compact as they are, maybe, are not in fact the simplest infectious agents present. A number of other entities that are smaller than viruses can cause disease in animals and plants. These agents can be collectively considered to be sub-viral pathogens. The adjective sub-viral was coined in parts because these agents did not fit into the standard taxonomy schemes for viruses. Sub-viral agents, agents are composed of three kinds. The first one is a satellite virus second is viroids and the third is prions. The satellite viruses basically depends on another virus for propagation. In viroids, viroids are compro uh, comprised of only RNA that is they are devoid of any protein components. So as we know uh, a virus it is made up of a genetic material either a DNA and RNA and along with that a protein uh, uh, capsid that is they are composed of protein and nucleic acid. But in viroids, they are only comp uh, comprised or they are only composed of the RNA, RNA and whereas the prions, prions are comprised of proteins only and are devoid of any nucleic acid components. Viroids, the first recognized viroid is the pathogenic agent of the potato spindle tuber disease. It was discovered by Theodore Otto Diener. Uh, a plant patho uh, pathologist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture Research Center in Bettsville, Maryland in 1971. So, this is a figure of uh, first in the left, it is a, it has been shown of a healthy uh, potato tuber and then towards the right we have the spindle shaped tuber which is affected by the potato spindle tuber viroid disease. Now the nature of viroids, viroids are infectious RNA molecule that lack a protein component. Viroids are small, covalently closed, circular, single stranded RNA molecules that are the smallest known pathogens. Viroid cause a number of important plant diseases and can have a severe agriculture impact. Viroids typically have a narrow host range that is implied by their names. Basically, for example, the potato uh, spindle tuber viroid, they infect the potatoes. However, host range expansion of some viroids has been uh, observed. Now, after introduction into a plant, all viroids reproduce according to the following steps. First, they are imported into a cellular organelle, then replication occurs, then export out of the organelle happens, then trafficking to the adjacent cells of these viroids, then entry into the phloem through which they have a long distance move movement to leaves and roots, then exit from phloem into new cells to repeat the cycle. So, this is how uh, they uh, they move from one part of the plant to the other and they reproduce in this way. So, this is a diagram showing the distinct uh, steps of systemic infections uh, in viroids. So, we can see how they first enter the organelle and from there they exit and then they move to another cell by cell to cell trafficking and from there they enter the vascular system that is a phloem and they do a long distance trafficking and then they exit the phloem and enters a new cell to repeat the cycle. Now the structure of viroid, the extracellular form of a viroid that is outside a host cell, the structure of viroid is a naked RNA and there is no protein capsid. Although the viroid RNA is a single stranded covalently closed circle, its extensive secondary structure forms a hairpin shape double stranded molecule with closed ends. This apparently makes the viroid sufficiently stable to exist outside the cell. So this is a viroid structure where the viroid is consists of a single stranded circular RNA that forms seemingly double stranded structure by interstrand base pairing but actually they are a single stranded molecule. 
now the classification on the basis of the international committee on taxonomy of viruses currently has divided viroids into two families the first family is the family of pospiviroid and the other family is the family of epson viroid the family of pospiviroid they have circular rna that exist as a rod like shape due to intra strand base pairing which forms a double stranded region with a single stranded loop and in the family of epson viroid they have a circular rna that exists as a rod with a highly branched structure at one end rather like a tree trunk with its roots so this is the uh, viroid structure of the family of pospiviroid and the family of epson viroid now the transmission of viroid because it lacks a capsid a viroid does not use a receptor to enter the host cell instead the viroid enters a plant cell through wound as from wound generated from an uh, due to an insect or from any other mechanical damage so once it has entered the plant it uh, the viroid moves from cell to cell via plasmodesmata which are the thin strands of cytoplasm that links uh, all the plant cells now the replication how viroids replicate there is no evidence that viroid encodes proteins or mrna unlike viruses which are parasites of the host translational machineries viroids are parasites of cellular transcription proteins that is they depend on cellular rna polymerases for replication so the two types of viroid families that we have see they replicate in different locations within the infected plant cell like in the family of pospiviroid it replicates in the nucleus whereas the family epson viroid replicates in the plant plastid such as chloroplast however they replicate in a similar fashion in this diagram we can see how the pospiviroid and the epson viroid is replicating firstly in pospiviroid in plants infected with the members of pospiviroid the viroid plus rna is imported into the nucleus probably by the nuclear import machinery once the pospiviroid enters the nucleus the viroid positive sends rna is copied by a rolling circle mechanism that produces a complementary linear concatemeric negative sends rna these products are then further copied again to produce a concatemeric linear positive sends rna molecule which are then cleaved by rna3 the linear monomeric positive sends rna molecule produced by cleavage of uh, the enzyme leads to the uh, ligation uh, by dna ligase 1 thereby giving copies of pospi viroid now in plants infected with the members of epson viroid the viroid positive sends rna is imported into the chloroplast by an unknown import pathway and the complementary uh, negative sends rna are produced by chloroplast dna dependent rna polymerase now the uh, circular positive sends rna is then copied into a linear concatemeric negative sends rna after self cleavage by ribozymes and ligation the negative sends rna serves as a template for a round of concatemeric positive sends rna synthesis followed by cleavage and ligation to produce mature viroids now the self ligating activity of viroids in the family of epson viroid is enhanced by a chloroplast trna ligase so therefore the replication of viroids require three enzymatic activities firstly the rna polymerase the rnas and the rna ligase and um, the family of pospiviroid it undergoes a asymmetric re uh, replication whereas the family of epson viroid undergoes a symmetric replication pathogenesis so plant may be infected with a viroid without showing any symptoms that is it have a latent infection 
However, the same virod in another host species may cause severe disease. Symptoms of virod infection in plants include stunting of growth, deformation of leaves and fruit, stem necrosis and death. The pathogenicity of virod is not very well understood, but it is known that particular regions of the RNA are required. Uh, studies have shown that removing these regions block the development of disease. So, some data suggests that viroids cause disease by triggering a eukaryotic response called the RNA silencing, which normally functions to protect against infection by RNA viruses. So, during the RNA silencing, the cell detects the presence of double stranded RNA and cuts it into small fragments. These are used by the RNA silencing machinery to destroy target mRNA molecules or prevent their translation. Viroids may assert this response by hybridizing to specific host mRNA molecules to which they have complementary nucleotide sequence. Formation of the viroid host hybrid double strand RNA molecule is thought to elicit RNA silencing. So, in the end this results in destruction of the host mRNA and therefore silencing of the host gene. Failure to express a required host gene leads to disease in the host plant. Some of the important plant pathogenic viroids are the avocado sunblotch viroid disease, the potato spindle tuber viroid disease and the apple scar skin viroid disease. Prions Prions are small protein containing infectious particles with no detectable nucleic acid. They were suspected to be viruses, but otherwise do not conform to the standard definition of viruses. They differ from viruses in their many properties. The prions show the following characteristics, for example, prions like viruses are filtrable. They apparently lack any virion structure or genome. Unlike viruses, they are unusually resistant to inactivation by heat at 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, disinfectants like formaldehyde and radiations can inactivate them. They are however inactivated by phenol, ether, sodium hydroxide and hypochlorite. Some of the examples of prions are the disease caused by prions are a large group of related neurodegenerative conditions which affect both humans and animals. These diseases belong to a family of diseases known as the transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. Now, there are six human uh, transmissible spongiform encephalopathies caused by prions. They are Kuru, the CJD, the variant CJD, we have GSS, the FFI, the sporadic fatal insomnia. Then in animals, the uh, prion diseases are, that includes the scrappy and visna, which is disease of sheep, the bovine spongiform encephalopathy, which is uh, commonly or uh, popularly known as the mad cow diseases, then the transmissible mink encephalopathy and the chronic wasting deer disease of deer, mule and elk. Now, the replication process in prions, uh, so the host cell itself encodes the prions. The host contains a gene that is PRNP which is the prion protein which encodes the native form of the prion known as the prion protein cellular which is encoded by PRPC. So, this protein is actually found primarily found in the neurons of a very healthy animal especially in the brains. Now, the pathogenic form of the prion protein is designated as PRPSE which is prion protein scrappy because the first prion disease to be discovered was that of a scrappy in sheep. Prion protein scrappy is identical in amino acid sequence to prion protein cellular from the same animal species, but it has a different conformation. So, the pathogenic prion replicates by converting a pre-existing native prion into the pathogenic form. So, in this diagram we can see this is a normal prion protein cellular 
okay uh, it is basically uh, formed of alpha alexis that is an arranged in the alpha alex conformation but whereas in the diseased prion which is the prion protein scrappy they are arranged in a beta plated sheet manner so the conformation has changed but then the protein sequences is the same now this is a mechanism of prion misfolding which has occurred uh, in a cell so initially the prion protein which is actually present the gene present in our body uh, it has been transcribed and uh, translated so the prion protein cellular which is the normal protein which is not at all infectious in nature is being uh, translated it has been synthesized now uh, due to some uh, spontaneous reaction or due to some mutation there was an induction or an inducing of misfolding uh, in the prion protein cellular which caused it to form prion protein scrappy okay so once the prion protein scrappy is formed which is actually the misfolded protein once that is formed now when it comes in contact with a normal prion or when it comes in contact with the prion protein cellular it converts it into a prion protein scrappy that is when a pathogenic prion form comes in contact with the normal prion it converts it converts the normal prion into a pathogenic one so by mere contact the prion pathogenic prion converts the normal prion into a pathogenic one so that is how uh, the prion protein replicates and after replication the see these pre uh, infectious prion that is the prion protein scrappy starts to accumulate so this is the histo histological images of prion where we can see accumulations of prion protein uh, scrappy or the infectious protein uh, prion protein present so in a normal cell there is no accumulation but in the case of kuru or in the in a classic cjd clear case or in a classic uh, scrappy uh, case we can see the accumulation of these infectious prion protein present now the pathogenesis now prion disease is transmitted either orally or transcutaneously but how the prion reaches the central nervous system or uh, the target is not yet fully understood so it is believed that a functional immune system is essential for replication of prion and their transport so in these cells large amount of prion are present in the dendritic cells as well as in the nerve endings so the spongy form encephalopathy caused by prions may be infectious hereditary or sporadic so the prions if it's form it can happen in different ways so the as i told about before uh, when the prion protein has been the prion protein scrappy which is the infectious one when it is formed it starts to accumulate forming forming an aggregate that forms an insoluble crystalline fiber referred to as amyloids in neural cells that leads to disease symptoms including the destruction of brain and other neuron tissues so this is a list uh, of how of the pathogenesis and transmission of prion related diseases in humans so we can see how um, basically uh, how it has been caused and how it has been transmitted this is a list being given of the different uh, prion diseases now the characteristics is that these transmissible spongy form encephalopathies in humans caused by prions shows the following characteristics so once it has been caused what exactly happens to these prions it has a very long incubation periods for almost several years the course of illness last for months from months to years a progressive uh, debilitating neurological syndrome that is invariably fatal there is an associated uh, what do you say uh, and there is an association with the pathological changes typically restricted to the cns that is the central nervous system especially the brains areas then there is an absence of specific immunological response in the host the agents are resistant to conventionally used inactivation methods and in the symptom uh, symptomatic patients a protein called 1433 brain protein has been detected in the cerebro spinal fluid so these are the references thank you